Hello and welcome to Decode 2023, the virtual developer conference produced by WP Engine. My name is Jason Cohen. I'm the founder of WP Engine. I'll be kicking things off today, but we have an amazing event with dozens of sessions of interesting modern topics all over the WordPress development world. Uh, so stay tuned for the whole day. Uh, I think you'll learn a lot and be excited about a lot of the technological developments that have been happening recently. So I'm going to kick it off with uh, an interesting topic that over the last 13 years of running WP Engine, I've seen change and develop and unfold. And I think it's uh, very interesting and relevant to all of us, which is the power dynamics between the people who make websites, the designers, the developers, and the marketers. And to start off, I want to take you back to a time where some of you are probably not alive. <laughs> But those of you who are alive will remember this kind of crap. These are the websites of the 90s. Remember when Amazon was, a, I think, a swimming pool? It looks like a swimming pool to me. It doesn't look like the Amazon River to me. But every website looked like this, that kind of background color. And there was always Times Roman font. Look, they have a million sites. That's, uh, that's pretty good, I guess. And we would search the web with these crappy tools. <laughs> Nine search results, that's a lot um, back then. Or Google, that Google was pretty pretty sweet back in the day. 25 million pages, wow, that's a, that's a lot. You could select 10 results or even more. I also like that it's from Stanford. It's not, uh, it's not yet Google proper yet, it's just a Stanford thing. I wonder if they made any money on that. I think, I think probably so. And uh, what about the technology behind the scenes of these, of these amazing websites? Well, if you were like me, you probably had a server in a closet. I literally had a server in a closet. <laughs> much like this, including the fan, because it got hot in there, of course, and you got to blow the hot air out so things don't melt, um, the world before cloud. And uh, I remember also, if you had to change the website, you'd, you'd take a chair in here and plug your keyboard and a little monitor in and uh, and change, change the website. <laughs> I can't believe we did stuff like that, but we did. It was great, I guess. And uh, our entertainment has changed quite a bit. Sometimes things come back around, I guess. But my favorite part of this is, is Michael Jordan's triceps. I mean, you know, in this picture, he was like sitting there flexing, knowing that this tricep is going to be on a, on a poster or something, you know, because even if you're Michael Jordan, you gotta, you gotta show that you have muscles or something like that. I don't know. Is this better now? Did this, did this movie get better? Was it ever good? I don't know. Um, but a lot of things have changed like the phones. Um, yeah, you know, playing snake used to be pretty fun, I guess. Um, at least we would talk to each other more, um, so maybe that's better. Now we have computers in our pocket that are probably better than our laptops, which is, uh, I guess, a good thing. <laughs> it's certainly um, it's certainly an interesting development. So in this past, in this weird uh, <laughs> world, um, what what was the relationship between these ob obviously important players of making websites, the designers who who design how it looks? Although back then you didn't have much choice. <laughs> The the, uh, the developers, the geeks who make it, and the site owners, the people who need that site to be effective in some fashion. And the answer is that uh, developers just had all the power. Um, because if the marketer wanted to change some text on the About Us page uh, to fix a typo, they would have to open a ticket with a developer. And the developer would go in the closet and make the change. So effectively, the developer has all the power, all the control. And that's not good. Even for the developer, that's not good. Because if you're... A software developer, you want to write code and make interesting things. You don't want to be editing text for someone with a ticket. Like this is not not a fun thing to do. So not only developers have all the power, but nobody's happy with that situation. But that's what it was at the beginning because it was new and and technology that's new is often inaccessible. So then what happened over time um, is that the marketers finally gained more and more control because of things like WordPress. Now, Matt Mullenweg probably remembers this version of WordPress. It's 1.0.1. And um, as, as simplistic as this obviously is, and anything that's version 1.0.1 is going to be simple, um, it's already an incredible amount of power compared to what marketers just had. I mean, there's a text box, and they can change the text. They can even make it bold. And as silly and simplistic as that sounds, and I guess it is simplistic, especially by our, our modern standards, uh, it's incredibly powerful because now you can change the typo in the About Us page without talking to the developer. That's an amazing amount of power compared to what you had. 
and that's just version 1.0.1 <laughs> that barely that barely did anything and and did the least that WordPress would ever do. So even just in the very beginning of WordPress, it starts to change the power dynamic of who is able to do what, who is in control of what. Um, and I think that's an interesting dynamic to thread through the current day and in the future and see how that's changing, which is sometimes for good, but actually sometimes for ill. And that means there's something we need to do about it. So zooming ahead, because it's fun to look at the past, but you know we get, we get it. Um, of course, WordPress has brought the marketer into a whole new light and designers too, um, with with the theme and plugin system and WordPress celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, which is just phenomenal and unthinkable. And I think any of us, no matter how long we've been with the WordPress community, probably are still stunned every time we think about how long it's been here for a tech, uh, for technology, certainly, but even just in general, as human beings, 20 years is a lot of anybody's life. So that's, uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. WordPress continues, of course, to eat the internet where most uh, CMSs or most websites that are large that use a CMS use WordPress, which is just phenomenal and hard to imagine how such a thing can be in something the size of the internet, but it is. And what WordPress has done, and we all know this, is it has created this balance of power between the marketers and designers and developers. And it started, of course, with the sim with the simple text box with a few with a little bit of formatting, and then it went on to lots of things. We don't have to list them all, but if I can control menus as a marketer, I can make pages and, and, and organize my, my navigation and really build out entire sites or multi-site where I can launch multiple sites, entire sites, um, without having to talk to a developer. Or amazing SEO tools that are by far the, the leader in how to do SEO on the web today, um, just built in that marketers can use uh, to be as smart as possible, again, without talking to a developer or creating forms people can fill out. And obviously, this is just four out of dozens and dozens of topics that um, that are in WordPress that that give power to the marketer in a way that doesn't disempower the developer. Developers still um, make all kinds of things, such as making the tools that do this. Um, uh, and designers, of course, can can make it look like anything they want. And so everyone's starting to have the powers that they um, that they should have. Um, and, and so everyone can do their job uh, better. And WordPress again facilitating this through through these these features. And that's now culminated in the block editor and full site editing in the last few years, where we've taken yet another leap forward in general, and in particular in this dynamic of the of the developers and the designers and the site owners and what this means. I, I think the block editor, and, and again, culminating in full site editing, um, takes it to the next level of goodness. The developers aren't losing any power. Um, they still control how, um, how sites can, can be assembled. Um, but now they have a new tool. So we had plugins and things like short codes. We had things like themes, obviously. And now we have another tool. And of course, the tool is blocks. And this is, this is yet another way for a developer to create functionality that is visual, that can be mixed in with other things, that can be involved in a layout, that can have various configuration, that gives the marketer power to make specific kinds of changes to it. And yet, the block is reusable. It's testable. Um, whether you reuse it within your company or within your agency, or maybe you give it away on the, on the, on the internet, maybe you sell it on the internet, just all kinds of different ways of taking this uh, capability and doing stuff with it, just like we've been doing with plugins and themes for so long. Um, it's just another way for developers to uh, uh, create interactive and visual components. So fantastic for developers to do. Now it is true that you have to learn new technology. There's things like React, there's things like JavaScript. That is true, but of course, that's uh, that's our lot in life as developers is to learn new technology. Sometimes <laughs> you don't have to. You could be a COBOL developer, and that's a perfect. They have a lot of job security as a COBOL developer, so you can do that. That is one of the career paths. But mostly as a developer, we do have to learn technology sometimes in in order to um, progress, just as technology progresses. So to me, blocks is just one of those things where yes, there's something new to learn, and um, there's great benefits for doing it, and it it helps. Um, WordPress in general as a, as a platform for designing things on the web. So developers are still empowered. What about designers? Ah, designers. Um, I think on the one hand, it's just getting started and there's all kinds of interesting future things that will help designers, which we'll talk about uh, at the end. Um, but already things are good because designers can, again, help design what are these blocks? What are these components? 
And furthermore, there's some new controls and tools that uh, that we didn't have before that, that are now um, facilitated by the block editor. So for example, this is an actual screenshot from our intranet site, which obviously is WordPress and uses full site editing in the, in the block editor. And what you're seeing here is um, the, uh, in this case, it's not a marketer, it's, but it is a site owner because it's our, it's our company intranet. So really it's our employee experience folks who, who work on this. Anyway, they, um, it, it's possible that you could say, oh, you could pick any color at all for the text color or the background color or border color or something like that. But if you can pick any color at all, on the one hand, I guess that's empowering to be able to pick anything at all. And on the other hand, um, that means you're not on brand because what you're seeing there is our WP Engine brand colors. So on the one hand, you want to give the marketer the power to pick a color. On the other hand, uh, maybe you want to stay within a brand palette or you want to stay within that palette almost all the time or certainly make it easy to pick colors out of the palette. And so that's what you're seeing here. And so this is us uh, having configured the block editor with our uh, brand palette. And so it's very easy for folks that, again, are not even not designers and not developers to make great content that looks good and is on brand. So this is a designer's dream to empower other people to do that and yet stay on brand. Um, if you really want to irk a designer, then get off brand. <laughs> I've learned that too. Um, so, and they're right, by the way, they're correct. <laughs> um, so um, what about the marketers? Well, again, I, I think if WordPress hadn't already issued, uh, ushered in the golden age of empowering marketers, I think the block editor and, and full site editing, clearly it's, it's even better um, because now, now you, they can construct entire layouts of content or entire pages that are laid out differently. Whereas before you might need a developer to make a new template inside the, uh, the theme or something like that. So whether it's custom headers and footers, sidebars, content areas, whole new pages with different layouts, I mean, it's kind of all the things, um, and that's the point. That's why it's so empowering, because they can do all the things. Um, you could create 20 landing pages in an afternoon yourself by dragging and dropping and different stuff, and then load it into the A-B tester. You can do it all by yourself. Uh, you don't have to wait for a developer to code it. You don't even have to wait for a designer to mock it up. Um, yeah, at WP Engine, we do this, of course. Um, most companies uh, at some scale do... Um, landing pages for stuff and test them. And it used to take us weeks to design them and then develop them and then get them loaded into WordPress and so on. And now it literally takes us an afternoon to make 20. And that's uh, that's incredibly empowering. Um, so uh, so here we are uh, now at this at this age. Um, and, um, and it's great. Uh, it, WordPress has really empowered the three personas to do their, their best work, um, work together. And, and that's great. But there's another trend that's happening in web development generally and in WordPress development specifically, and that's headless development, which we've talked about a lot um, as WP Engine and in our DevRel and in Decode last year. And we will talk about more this year because it's a continuing trend. Um, right now, 3% of the largest websites on the internet are headless. And uh, just to put that in perspective, um, that's bigger than Drupal and about the same size as Shopify. And it's growing very fast. So uh, this is gonna, this square is going to get bigger and bigger, but it's already significant. And so it's it's an important uh, development trend. And we believe that in uh, that headless WordPress sites are um, are the future of headless sites. And of course, um, that's something we're very much dedicated to at WP Engine with our product Atlas. Again, you'll hear much more about that um, later in other sessions. And uh, but right now I want to talk about a problem that Headless has uh, because Headless breaks all this yummy stuff that we were just talking about. Because Headless removes all the front end stuff. That means what the website looks like, how the URLs are parsed, uh, what actually happens, what, what we in WordPress might call themes. <laughs> um, all that's happening outside of WordPress. And uh, that ends up breaking this dynamic and this great stuff that WordPress has constructed. So in particular, Developers are still empowered. In fact, they're overpowered. In fact, it's just like back in 1997 where the developers needed for everything. So the good news there is, okay, developers have access to all these modern development tools, JavaScript and that whole universe of um, uh, development pipeline, development tools, testing stuff, the world of React and other component networks, the world of Gatsby and Next.js and other uh, frameworks for building websites. And there's amazing, incredible stuff in there. Um, 
There's libraries you can use that do all sorts of amazing stuff. It's easy to get API access to literally any kind of hosted service elsewhere to integrate other services in. Um, it's, it's modern language that people learn in encoding academies and universities. And just in general, it's the most popular programming language. So a lot for a developer to love about that. And that's good. But the problem is, at this, this time, it comes at the expense of the site owners and even the designers. Because these things, the marketer said, wait, I, I was used to editing the content, doing anything I want. Developers say, yeah, that's now happening in JavaScript. So you can't do that. But wait, I'm, uh, I, I like doing, I, like, I, I set up the menus and I make pages. And the JavaScript developers say, no, we do the menus. We make the pages. And all of a sudden, we're back to 1997. You want to move a picture five pixels to the left, open a ticket. And of course, this is bad. It's bad for the same reason it was bad in 1997. So our vision for this is, OK, headless is a trend. It's going to continue. There are benefits. But we've got to do something about this dynamic. And so uh, WP Engine's doing our part in building software, infrastructure, things like Atlas and Faust and other things, again, that you'll hear about later today. Um, but I would just want to talk about it at a high level, what those things are, and then look in the future as well of what kinds of things uh, will come. So we know developers are happy. OK, great. What about designers? Well, there's really good news for designers um, because it turns out that there's a lot of great design systems specifically for these JavaScript frameworks like React. So for example, this is a design library um, uh, that we use ourselves at, at WP Engine. So we built this. We call it Unicorn. It's kind of an internal uh, uh, product name. And uh, but but there's tools that are both free or, or for money, uh, open source and closed source that you can use for this sort of thing. But basically, the idea is that you have a component library, again, just like Blocks, but for React. And each of these components have uh, are designed and look a certain way, act a certain way. They may have different states, like if they're active or inactive or checked or disabled or in different languages or different contexts and so forth. And so um, whether it's uh, visual elements for a marketing site or whether it's controls, which even on a marketing site, you need for things like forms or a pricing page or something like that. Um, or some kind of status or some sort of better integration between something like a, a control panel or a user portal and the marketing site. The more of those become one, the better the customer experience. Anyway, there's these systems like this, which are great for designers because they can make all this and use this almost like a unit testing system to look at it. But then developers can just pick these up. These are all React components. They can just pick them up, drop them in. So just like we talked about the marketers with blocks, developers can just take these, use it, and bam, they're on brand and everything's consistent looking and the components have been tested with all the browsers and things and so forth. And so it's really a great marriage of, of designers owning their stuff and then developers being able to just reuse it. Um, so there's, there's actually really good news when it comes to what designers can do. So what about the website owners? What about the marketers? Um, possibly the most important person because they're the ones that need the website to perform well <laughs> and whatever that may mean. It could mean generating ad revenue. It could mean e-commerce transactions. It could mean great branding. It could mean getting your uh, getting getting the uh, word out about your company or, or or just communicating something important in the world. Anyway, they need the the site to perform. So, um, okay, what about them? Well, the first good thing about um, about headless for the um, for the marketers is performance. So. Here's a graph of uh, one of our customers who just went through the Super Bowl having Super Bowl ads. And it's fun to see what kind of traffic you get during the Super Bowl, right? So they ran uh, two ads. And you, th these are the two little blips, or little, two thin blips you can see on the right. That first blip was the first ad where they got only 5 million hits in one minute. And then, um, and then the second blip was the second ad where over a span of three minutes, they got 25 million hits. <laughs> So absolutely phenomenal scale. The site had no trouble. We were sitting there refreshing the site ourselves <laughs> during that. It was fast as heck. Um, the time, the average time to first byte was 150 milliseconds during that spike. So headless websites can be really fast and scalable. So that's really nice to see. Also showing here are these weird three blips like a heart monitor there at the beginning. This is really funny. What those were is load tests. Because of course the customer's like, I don't know if you guys can handle our traffic. So we did load testing. As you can see, 
even a low test cannot possibly reproduce the traffic that you get <laughs> during the Super Bowl. So fortunately, everything was fine. Everything scaled. It's all good. But uh, it's it's almost not even worth trying to <laughs> test it because you can't you can't simulate it. Anyway, okay. So this is good. If you're if you're a site owner, you say yes. This is the kind of technology I want. So far, so good. But what about me being disempowered? So that's what we're changing with Atlas and Faust. So you'll see this later today as well. You can play with it yourself. By the way, this is all open source, GPL, all the good things. Um, the WordPress components and the JavaScript components are all open source and free. So um, you know, this is a community project. We'd love to have you try it. We'd love to have you contribute to it um, and so forth. So please, uh, please check this out. But just to give you this quick uh, demo, what you see on the left is the regular WordPress block editor. And you can see someone's editing uh, a text and with some strange background color and an image. And then on the right, that's a headless, Faust-based headless WordPress site. And as you can see, all of the settings and configuration in the block editor has been transferred there. But, it, but here's the magical part. The things on the right are native, regular React components. Not something weird and special, just regular stuff. And so what that means is we've taken the world of the block editor which has all the benefits we said, um, and will continue to get better and better. But we've also kept all of the benefits of the React ecosystem and native JavaScript things on the front end so that a regular React JavaScript developer just says, oh, okay, these are React components. I know how to, do, I know how to mess with that, we're done. So it's sort of the, the perfect situation for both parties. And again, that's that kind of attitude, the perfect situation for both parties is how we're gonna get back to this, even in headless, where everyone controls their own area, everyone's happy with, with how the technology unfolds and so on. So that's our, um, that's our vision for, for um, headless, but also I think it's, it's, it's just continuing the vision of WordPress and what it's done for everyone um, in the world when it comes to making websites. And we're just taking that to headless also. So how can this get better in the future again? Um, a few things, and uh, some of these we're working on and some of them we're not, or some of them we, we might in future, but I encourage the community to work on them because I think WordPress is strength as a community. We're doing our part, um, but really it takes all of us to do this. So here's some ideas. So first of all, those design systems. It's really neat to have those integrated design systems with React, but what about with the block editor? And shouldn't it be both? Shouldn't it be that designers make things, then they become blocks and they become React components. And so everything is, is always connected and always makes sense. I think that'd be incredible and an obvious place to go to, to knit everyone together even more. Testing is another thing where it's a little ad hoc. There's no standard way to, no one standard way to do it, especially when you consider blocks and front end React components both. What does it mean to have an integrated test suite of that? Maybe even integrated with the design system because if those are tested and you can drop them in, that's starting to sound really solid. And it sounds like if you have solid components, you could really build things very quickly and with high quality. I think that's a very interesting area to explore. Another one, which is already on the block editor uh, uh, roadmap, so I'm not, I'm not saying anything new here really, is to, is to make sure blocks are multi-language, multi-locale ready. Um, most of WordPress today is not in English. And I think that, uh, that more and more percentage of WordPress uh, over time will be not English because there are more people in the world who don't speak English. And, uh, um, and as more people come online, uh, most of those folks don't speak English. And so to me, it's just a natural place for WordPress in general to grow. Um, I think it's just compatible with, uh, with the ethos of WordPress in general to be as accessible to as many people as possible. That has to come into blocks. Again, it's in the, it's in the roadmap already, but uh, that's exciting. And again, that needs to flow in through headless systems also. Then there's a lot more we can do with the marketer uh, and giving more power. This, I mean, they have so much power, but so what? They're like, there's always more to do. Um, uh, especially in headless, where again, a lot of that power has been removed, there's a lot to put back. So just one small example. Suppose you move a site from one place to another. Well, old traffic's still gonna go to the old uh, page and need to get redirected to the, to the next page. No problem, there's, um, there are plugins in WordPress to do that, but in a headless context, that doesn't work because again, the headless uh, components don't know about that. So bringing that from WordPress back to the headless component would mean that the marketer is back in control of those redirects as they're called. So there's a bunch of examples like that where we got to give more power to the uh, marketer, especially in the headless environment where some of that power has been removed. 
And then finally, AI. And so in the remaining 30 seconds, I will give you a complete up, uh, update of everything that AI is and will be, except for one thing. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to do that in 30 seconds. Um, of course, it's an incredible topic, and it's all very exciting. And we need more space than this uh, than the very end of this keynote to talk about it. So stay tuned. And, and um, clearly, this is going to be an incredible area of, um, of, of uh, uh, exploration and things are gonna be tried and things are gonna fail and things are gonna be incredibly wonderful. And it'll be astounding to see all that unfold for sure. So we might show a little bias, um, but we think WordPress is not only the best CMS, but also the best headless CMS. Um, and no matter what happens with technology in the cloud and on the internet, we're here for it. Um, again, I think the strength of WordPress is in the community. Well, we're doing our part to try to make this dynamic between the three personas be as strong as possible. Um, and so are a lot of you. And I think it's an interesting um, way to state the vision statement is to uh, make it so that developers, designers, and uh, and the site owners, the marketers are empowered to do their best work and work together. I think WordPress has done a great job with that mission statement and, and all of us together, we can just make that more and more true. We've done it for 20 years, which is still incredible to think. And um, we're here for the next 20 to 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 uh, to continue doing that. So uh, stick around. There's over 12 sessions coming up um, on all kinds of topics. Some of them are about products that WP Engine has, like Atlas and our head that are, that's our headless product, uh, local WP Migrate, ACF. Um, there's topics on uh, WooCommerce, but there's also topics on things just in general around the WordPress world. And even outside of that, there's talks from Google, uh, and there's even a talk from Matt Mullenweg. So stay tuned for all sorts of interesting information. Remember, all the sessions are recorded. And so if you have to miss one, or if there's two going at the same time and you want to see them both, then just watch the sessions afterwards, and I'll see you there. Thanks. <laughs>